feature, Free Speech Fridays. I'm going to have to tell Ryan that it's in a different half hour than it was. We had some technical glitches, which is, are actually, in this regard, relatively rare on the platform. And given the small amount of money we commit to our enterprise, uh, perhaps we've been living on borrowed time. But anyway, we have now, I think, arranged a thing. Now, Ben, I'm going to let you run this. And we're just going to do a test. Our two guests today are Yvonne Van Dongen, a regular contributor to the platform. Yvonne, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud yes, and clear. Yes, okay. And now we'll go to part two of the test. Mark Champion, who I think is on video link, though we're not putting it up too early in the morning for someone who hasn't uh, had their shower and put on their makeup. Mark Champion, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Sean. Okay, and now the final leg of the trifecta. Can you two hear each other? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God, we're away and laughing. <laughs> Let me recap then. This puberty blockers thing in Britain is big news uh, amongst those who care about it. And, and Yvonne's explained why she do, does, and I can tell you on the text I get, uh, a lot of New Zealanders do as well, but I wonder if it is a slight or a small rabbit hole. Mark Champion, is this an issue, for example, that you and your social uh, circle are interested in? Uh, no. Um, look, the statistics are, are concerning. Um, a tenfold increase in 10 years in the use of um, these drugs. But um, it, it really hasn't raised its head um, in our part of the world and bringing up an adolescent child, um, boy, um, we haven't really encountered it. But I can see the concerns and I can see that um, in Britain at least, the home of woke, um, they have moved against it. All right, so you're aware of it, but probably not concerned about it to the event, uh, to the extent that someone like Yvonne is. Well, look, I'm not, um, I'm not following it closely. Okay. Um, and it's not something that's come across our, our desk. Okay, all right. Can I ask you, Mark, and you are the parent of a young man, would you go along to a public library to watch a drag queen and have him read a story to your son? Well, I think... There's a long answer and a short answer. The short answer is no. But I think there's something here for Ben to really get his teeth into. Because I think that um, this started back, uh, from what I gather, in San Francisco in 2015. Surprise, surprise. And I think there's a lot of things that we need to uncover. I mean, for example, what books do they read? This is what interests me. Yeah. And why, and I, I guess, Yvonne... Why use a public library for what seems to be an ideological, global ideological campaign to, I don't know, encourage blokes to dress as shears? Yeah. It's to normalise, kind of obscene in lots of ways. To, it's quite grotesque, these men dressed as women. But the thing about the one in Rotorua, that I, when I looked into it, that one of the there's two drag queens and one is a woman. And that really threw me. Yeah, well, whoa, so, whoa, back up. Yeah, ah. seriously. Yeah, yeah. Her name is Sunita Torrance, and she... Has so she's her just a Daniel. badly dressed woman with too much makeup on. That's not... Yeah, and I, then I had to think, did I mind if women dressed up all frou frou up, read stories to children? And I thought, no, I don't. I don't mind. I mean, I, you know, if they want to, good luck to them. Because uh, it's an issue of safeguarding. And I feel weird about something that's basically a nighttime entertainment amongst the gay community being put on for children. I feel really uncomfortable about that and I wonder why they want to do it. So, yeah, I thought that was a really interesting twist. And she was brought up in the Destiny Church. And it's the Destiny Church that is doing a lot of the protesting. Oh, God. So, it's I know. More, and more bizarre. Mark, wouldn't it just be simply that we say to civic librarians uh, and their managers up and down the country, have a library that holds knowledge and allow people to come there and be quiet, read books and go on the internet. That's basically your only job. You don't have people, men or women, with too much makeup on reading stories. In libraries, it's pointless. It's not your core business, right? <laughs> Well, look, I, look. then we'd miss out on catchy titles such as My Princess Boy, a mom's story <laughs> about a young boy who loves to dress up. And the other classic, Jacob's New Dress. So, you know, alongside Are the little... Are those the stories they're digger, reading? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's the stories they're reading. And, um, and I just had to dig that out because, you know, um, 
shish little mouse and where the wild things are seem to have taken a bit of a back step. Oh, good Prince book. Where Boy. the wild went from, the red bloom. Geez, all the yep. classics. You're taking me back now. So it really basically is, it's kind of a woke indoctrination session, all these things, Mark. Well, you'd have to think so. Um, yeah. You know, um, yeah, and, yeah. I don't and, understand the Free Speech Union saying that it's okay, free speech so, because yeah, no, I'm it's glad not a you question asked of that. ideas. Because I Sorry had a really that. interesting That's... interview with Jonathan yeah. Aiding yesterday. And Jonathan Aiding is saying, and, and I'm really interested in your guys' view on this, he's saying... We believe in free speech, it's a hill we die on, and we don't like it when health and safety, in other words, the threat of protest is used to cancel people like Don Brash at Massey University, right? Or Graham yeah. Linehan, um, and anyone, and they say, and we're not, we don't like it when health and safety is used, and he says personally he doesn't like the men dressed up as Sheila's reading to women thing, but he says we don't like the way this has been cancelled and we believe that mm. it's the use of the thug's veto and, and we don't support the use of the thug's veto. Mark? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd agree that the, the, the health and safety is really just ducking for cover. Um, and, you know, as far as free speech goes, well, well it's more than just speech, isn't it? It's a performance um, and you've also yeah. got to look at the content and between those two, the performance and the content, I think the Free Speech Union probably has to um, think carefully. But the performance is in itself an expression of free speech. Well, I don't know. And does, the content does, does Jonathan... is, and to say that we don't like the content is literally censorious. Well, depending on what the content is and whether or not it's appropriate. Yeah, and you've just explained some of the titles, and I'm going, no, 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 that's not appropriate. But isn't that my prejudice and our prejudice there? Well, we are dealing with children. Yeah, okay, and that's no, different. That, and then that's the big issue. Yeah. It's Yvonne, a little bit like a syllabus in school. Yeah. Yvonne, can you see the principle of, of what Jonathan Ayling was on about? Can't, not really. I mean, if they were in the library talking about the history of drag and they were giving a talk and it was ideas and... Yeah. There was interaction. It'd be all right. But and I know you say performance is free speech, but I don't know. I'd question that. I don't know if it is. And when they're dealing with yeah. children, I think there's something else going on. But I do agree that the use of health and safety is feeble. Yeah. It's really feeble. They should, they should just come out and say, no, we don't do this in libraries. But yeah. to me, it's not free speech. It's not free speech. And even if they were reading decent books, you know, ordinary books, decent not groomer books. type books, well, you know, not my little... my son who's a girl and all that kind of yeah, stuff. I love you to Even the moon and back. Yeah, all those things. Yeah, things. all yeah. that wild things are. It's still, it's still a form of grooming. It's still, it's like, I think, inappropriate for children. I it's do. Friggin weird. It's friggin' weird is what it is. Um, it is. Now, Mark, <laughs> I, 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 I've structured our, our discussion this way because you say you're not particularly interested in puberty blockers. I'm sure you'd argue, Yvonne, these two issues are not unrelated. No, they're not. It's all about, it's all part of queer theory, the queering of the world, isn't it? And it's about breaking down norms and ma breaking down the idea of male and female and that uh, you can be whatever you want. It's, it's all nonsense and I don't know what the ultimate aim is and it's a lie, but that is what it's about. And giving puberty blockers to children, I mean, I know I can rent on about it, but I cannot actually see... A You're good not the only one, Yvonne. You are not the only I one know. at all. Um, know, so, Mark, can you see that link now? Oh, I can see the link. Um, I, I just think that we are talking about really small numbers. And, and again, Growing it comes numbers. back to... Uh, uh, yeah, but are these the really big issues we're dealing with? Mm. Mm. Yvonne, respond to that. I think that when we look back in time and we look at this medical malpractice and these experiments done on children we will think it is a major issue because these children are going to have lifelong issues you know they have joint and back pain they have um, sexual dysfunction they have urinary tract dysfunction they it affects their growth I mean there's huge there's lots that's not known about it so we're actually conducting a worldwide experiment on children. So I, I do think that's of concern. I do. 
All right. All right. Yeah. Oh, look, I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's of concern, but where does it rank alongside sort of family violence um, and the kind of social right. issues that or we, climate we're currently change. dealing with? Or climate change, right? <laughs> yeah, but family violence is complicated. You can't just say, oh, let's stop taking, do this and this, and then family violence will stop. It's a sort of multifactorial, complicated issue. This is Correct. simpler, just stopping puberty blockers, stop cross-sex hormones, stop experimenting on children. And stop and let them grooming children. kids in public libraries. Yeah, yeah but also on the scheme, in, the scheme of, in the scheme of things, which do, we complica- which do we concentrate on, the complicated things or the simple things? You know, um, where's, where's, the, where's the most effect going to be, um, uh, you know, where's the most effect? Where's the best outcome? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I hear you guys. Yeah. I want to have a break now because we're going to draw a okay. line under that um, okay. for the moment and we'll move on to other stuff. We'll just have a quick commercial break.